Hello, we're the WGHS Bay Blasters, and um, we are here to tell you a little bit more about Beyblades. This is a follow-up presentation from our last one. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. the purpose of our experiment was to figure out um, if and how the coefficient Beyblade corresponds to the type of Beyblade. So a coefficient Beyblade comes from a moment of inertia, and you know there's that coefficient in it. So that's what we're trying to find. Oh, and for different types of Beyblades. So stamina, attack, and defense Beyblades. All right, so I know I've already explained this, but I just need to make sure you all remember, as well as I do, uh, how Beyblades work. So here's what it kind of looks like when you've got it on the launcher. When you take it apart, it's got all these lovely parts to it. Um, over here at the end is the little tip. It attaches to this plastic bit, which is actually called the track. We call it the body last bend. We've done a little bit more research. We've been active in the Beyblade community now on the Beyblade forums. Uh, please friend me on Hammurabi 8 if you have any Beyblade questions um, or answers for me. <laughs> um, so. The tip goes on the track, the track slips into this little metal ring, which is actually called a metal ring, I think we called it, what, like a, a hat or something. No, that was the plastic one. Alright, well anyway, it goes into this, the little uh, plastic bit, which is called the plastic ring, uh, surprisingly enough, goes onto the top, and then this, which is called the face bolt, screws through the whole thing and keeps it all together. Um, here's a little bit of how the launcher works, which is really, really cool, but if you want a full explanation of that, we did it last time, so I won't do it again, as much as I'd like to. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? Alright. So last time we didn't really talk a whole lot about like the Beyblade experience, about actually battling, but this time we are going to, so we need to show you a little bit of what a battle looks like. This is in slow motion. You'll have to skip. Oh, great. Okay. Um. <laughs> Those are Kurt Grotman things. <laughs> That's why they're massive. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's really hard to see. Yeah. Uh, why is your computer so bad? That's a great computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Alright, well, you can kind of see two things spinning here, which is really the essential element of Beyblade. So there's one right here, this is an attack type Beyblade. It's a little difficult to see, but it has a lot of ridges, and it's slamming into this other Beyblade, which is not a defense type, and it's trying to move away from this one, essentially. In Beyblades, you both get a Beyblade, you let them rip in the arena, and then they just start ramming into each other or avoiding ramming into each other. See, essentially, what we're going to show you. Also, this is really cool. This is just really cool. Robbie? What does it mean to let it rip? Uh, that means that you have your Beyblade on the launcher, and then you put it over, and then it actually doesn't count if you don't say, 3, 2, 1, let it rip, and then you pull the launcher, and they go spinning. What do you say, 3, 2, 1, let it It doesn't count. The actual, in the rules, it does not count as an official um, Beyblade battle. Yep. It's important. But anyway, so this is kind of what we're looking at here, is how the interactions between the two Beyblades, and there's a lot of strategy that goes into how you build your Beyblade. Do we have a different Yeah. Is it? No. 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 Is it? Yeah. All right. Oh. Never mind. We're going to go back and we're going to talk about Beyblades. So there are three types of Beyblades. The first one, and the most um, sort of basic concept to grasp, is the attack Beyblade. The whole point of the attack Beyblade is to just mess up the other kinds of Beyblades. They have lots of ridges on their little metal ring, and that means that when they collide with other things, there are violent and <coughs> unpredictable collisions. They try to send the other one flying out of the arena, knock them over. If you send them just completely out of the arena, that's the best because it's the most interesting. The idea is you want a short battle with lots of violent collisions. So the tip is very flat and has <coughs> a whole lot of friction, which means that it moves around the arena, hunting down its prey. It also means that if it does get in a collision, the high friction means that it doesn't move very much. So it's able to stay hit and then keep hitting instead of bouncing away, like a lot of the other Beyblades do. Now, because it has a high friction tip with high surface area, it means that they don't stay up very long, so you need to win fast. That's all the whole point of it. The track size, which is the little middle body bit, doesn't really matter whole much about how big or small that goes. The metal wheel has to have lots of protrusions on it. The plastic wheel doesn't matter, but that doesn't matter for any of the Beyblades really a whole lot because... Color coordination. You, you really need a cool color coordination is really where a lot of the strategy comes in. Um, the next type I want to talk about is the defense type Beyblade, which is trying to, it's essentially engineered to beat the attack type. It's the uh, Tai Chi of Beyblades. It tries to use the attack type's own recklessness against it. So the metal ring has lots of very uniform ridges on it, and then it tries to create very calm uh, collisions. So when the attack Beyblade comes at it all crazy like, it just taps it and tries to move away. And because it keeps doing this dodging sort of motion without doing violent collisions and flying off, the attack blade, blade will eventually just spin itself out and die, while the defense bay blade is built to have a little bit more stamina and ends up winning. Now where the defense bay blade comes into trouble is, you also have to fight the third type, which is stamina bay blades. 
Stamina Beyblades just don't care about the other Beyblades in the arena and say that they are better at spinning and that's all that matters. Stamina Beyblades are very, very tall. They have very, very uniform metal rings, which makes them most like a ring, um, which gives them the highest, uh, what is it called, moment of inertia? That's what we thought. <laughs> well, the idea is the ring itself has the highest moment of inertia, which would make them spin the longest, essentially. So it's essentially just a top, and they try to stay away from all the other Beyblades, and if they get hit, they try to move away. The whole point is lasting whole minutes longer than other Beyblades sometimes, which is really interesting. Yeah, it's watch. crazy. So now we're going to move on to the derivation. OK, so we had to find an equation that we could plug all of our numbers into to find coefficient Beyblade. So I'm going to show you how we got that. Is, this is in the video. And yes. So yeah, I can, off. wherever you want to go, sure. Okay. Um, so we found that angular momentum is the integral of four times ten. Okay. And then um, moment of inertia is coefficient of Beyblade times mr squared. And where r <coughs> is the radius of the Beyblade. It's also important to note that even things that are not Beyblades have a coefficient here. It's just it's most interesting what it is a Beyblade. Yeah. But every object has some number there based mm -hmm. off its construction. Don't know why you would want to study anything else. A brick. <laughs> <laughs> a be ball. Much less interesting than a brick. And then um, <laughs> this is angular velocity is two pi over period. Um, so then we're going to put all that together. All these things into that. So the integral of torque times time equals coefficient mr squared times 2 pi all over a period. And then we just solve for coefficient beta. to the metal pole, and then using a force sensor, we pulled the rip cord so that we could get like how much force that we applied. Uh, we also took a slow motion video. Uh, we tried to let it rip consistently. <laughs> so the sorry the we from the force applied, we got the torque by multiplying by the radius. So which is the distance between force applied and the um, uh, center of the bay blade, which I think I have a picture of. Yeah, which is this distance in the launcher. So there was some debate as to like what that distance actually is, but we decided that this one is probably the most accurate uh, for various reasons. I need to go back. Do you want me to talk about what makes that complicated? Sure. Okay. So this is a very small number. And what happens when you get with very small precise numbers is that they actually change the final numbers a lot, which is very frustrating. <clears throat> Essentially, what we're looking at is the distance between where you're applying the force and the axis of rotation. And when you're looking at this small thing, where are you really applying the force on the ripcord or from the ripcord? And we couldn't figure out if it was maybe like here, where the first tooth touches this middle tooth, or maybe the center, or maybe halfway between. Um, so eventually we decided with this point right here because we figured that would be where the most force is coming in, or at least the average place. Um, but that is probably a source of error, is that it's kind of hard to get a precise location with gear teeth moving in such a way. Okay. Um, oh, so then we did, from the video that we took, we did video analysis with Logger Pro. Um, and then, there, do we have time to show? Video, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Do it. Well, it's 
facility. <coughs> okay, well this is um, our defense Beyblade, and you can see it's spinning. It's actually spinning really fast. It's like over 30 times a second, which is insane. Um, and then, so we put a sticker on it so that we could count the, uh, we could like put points and find the period. So the sticker made it easier. So we did that for all three of our types of Beyblades. Um, here's our data table. Uh, these are from last year, and this is what we found this year. So um, as you can see, so this is defense, this one is uh, stamina, and this is attack. So we originally thought that the stamina Beyblade was going to have the coefficient closest to one, but it's the farthest from one, so that's a little bit concerning. Uh, we already talked about this picture. Do you want to talk about grass? Like the two part grass. Yeah. Okay, so this is how we found the period from peak to peak or from trough to trough is one rotation. So we just took from like here to here something from A peak to A peak and then found the time between and divided to get the average time for the rotation. Um, this is the integral of that thing. I don't know what that is. Angular momentum. So the integral of angular momentum. Oh, sorry, the integral of torque over time. That's the integral of torque over time, <laughs> which is angular momentum. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so that's how we found um, <coughs> those pieces. Okay, here's our conclusion. So, um, according to our data, we're either wrong or we got a lot of error. Um, and it, it's probably both. Uh, so, because we didn't have a good way to test to see if we were like on the right track, so we just did a lot of trials like to get closer to um, what is the right number. Um, so yeah, defense had the highest coefficient Beyblade, and attack and stamina were next in that order. Um, attack, the the three trials that we did, the coefficients were all over the place though. So we're kind of attributing that to the fact that it moved around a lot, um, like it's supposed to. So there could be a lot of error there. I mean, attack Beyblades by the very nature is supposed to be unreliable and tricky. So it is. <laughs> um, we so from our data we can conclude that the coefficient Beyblade is not the only factor that goes into um, how well or long a Beyblade spins, which we that's what we assumed from the beginning that the coefficient Beyblade was the only factor, but it's not. Um, life is complicated. <laughs> so are Beyblades. <laughs> yeah, Beyblades are like life. That's why you should play them. Um, Oh, so if we assume the coefficients are true, then from last year, we had two Beyblades that are most likely defense types and one that was most likely an attack type, um, according to just looking at the coefficients. Um, yeah, so because they're not exact for a few reasons, um, because of error that we may have gotten or because um, they're like the Beyblades that we didn't know anything about types last year, so the Beyblades that we had were not necessarily just attack Beyblades. Because, you know, there's like an attack ring and an attack tip, and what if you mix and match? You know, um, so we probably did that. It's also interesting to note that the ones we used this year were based on my construction of what I thought an attack, defense, and stamina Beyblade were. And as much as I love Beyblades, I could be horribly wrong about what I made. Um, I tried to check with sources on the internet, but Again, I'm not technically an expert. I haven't got my PhD yet, so. They can be made with cleaves. That's all you know. That's right. Yeah, so um, we need to do some more research, which maybe will happen next semester. <laughs> <laughs>